Welcome to Gaius Everything, a podcast ranging in topics from sex to astrophysics. This time, it will be a personal story. The Revenge of the Calculator Geek. And then he laughed at me. I stood there stripped of dignity, and he just laughed at my calculator. The head of the Norwegian Association of Astronomy, the head of the Calculator Club, laughed. I swore then and there that I would get my revenge. I would get the HP 67, I would get the, get the HP 97, or the newly published HP 41. I will get my revenge. I was 14. Quick rewind, six years earlier, my mother pointed to the stars when I was eight years old. I saw the three stars and she said, that's Orion's belt. And I was mesmerized. I started asking about the stars, about the constellations, and she pointed to Cassiopeia, she pointed to the Big Dipper, and she knew her stuff. She was a very knowledgeable woman, a teacher, secretary, uh, jack of many trades. But at that point, I really wanted to understand what was behind it all. How does the universe work? How can we know how it works? And I decided to learn the language behind it all, mathematics. So when I was nine, I made a point of doing everything I could to finish my curriculum before the year started, and then turning in the books and saying, okay, I'm done. And that got me a free card to do whatever I want during the mathematics uh, sessions or lectures. So I had this wonderful teacher called Antonsen who said, okay, yeah, you'll be with, uh, with Jan, uh, the other guy that was also quite uh, intense when it came to mathematics. Uh, you guys can be uh, out there in the corridor and do whatever you want. So we started calculating the mass of the moon, the distance of a light year, and stuff like that, until we got to the point where we got bored. And then we went over to junior high, and we found another very fantastic teacher who taught us everything about Einstein's theory of relativity, Lorentz transformations, and the mathematics behind it. And when we emptied her... She said, okay, if you want to learn more about these things, I was 13, then you have to go to the university. So I went to my mother and said, okay, so I'm going to the university. And she went, okay, sure. Here's the money for the, for the tram or the subway. And off I went. And I found this wonderful guy. I mean, this is a string of people that helped me. Uh, Frank, and he was a, a student of um, astrophysics. And he took me under his wings and started teaching me all kinds of mathematics regarding astrophysics. And then I was so taken in by astrophysics that I decided to launch myself into the Norwegian Association for Astronomy. And uh, there, uh, in one of the first meetings, uh, my mother went with me and they were about to elect a new board member. And it seemed a little bit hard. They were trying to pull some person out of the crowd of maybe 20 to to be the last person as a board member and then my mother just uh, nudged me and said so why don't you put up your hand i mean i was terrified of people i was like really scared but for some reason my hand went up and uh, my mother smiled and they asked me what my name was and uh, being a 13 14 year old guy uh, they thought maybe it was funny to have such a mascot on their team. So I was elected as a board member of this society. Now that got me rolling with, uh, you know, uh, reading everything I could on astrophysics. And uh, I just had, the year before, I had gotten a telescope for uh, my uh, Christmas. And this year, when I was 13, I had uh, gotten a calculator. For, uh, for Christmas. And this calculator was a Casio calculator. But when I frequented um, the corridors and the rooms of the professor at the Astrophysics Institute, there was only one brand that was on everybody's uh, table. 
and that was Euler Packard. So I was really wanting to have a Euler Packard. My Casio calculator was not a programmable one, it was an ordinary calculator, albeit uh, scientific and very advanced, but I really wanted a programmable calculator. So I swapped it in, not for a Euler Packard because that was way too expensive, way out of my league. So I swapped it for a Texas Instruments, sort of the, yeah, the, the ordinary man's calculator. So I got myself a Texas Instrument 57, which had 50 programming steps. And when you turn it off, the memory was lost. So every time you turn it on, you had to reprogram the 50 programming steps or however long your program was. So this was a, getting a little bit tedious. But anyway, I, I had this idea that I should be able to calculate the Julian Day on my TI-57. There was such a program for an HP-67, which had 224 programming steps, and, and able to save your programs on a, on a magnetic card. So every time you turn it off, yes, the program was gone, but inserting this little magnetic programming step strip, the magnetic card, uh, you could uh, you regain whatever program you saved on them, sort of like a little disk, you know. And um, I went to the head of this programming uh, club in the Norwegian Association of uh, Astronomy and said, you know, I would really like to learn how to convert this HP67 program into my TI57. Uh, he was a little bit puzzled. I think he didn't even care about Texas Instrument calculators, plastic calculators, not that durable, not like the Rolls Royce of the Hewlett Packard. And he said, looking down on me, so how many programming steps does it have? And I said, a 50. And then he laughed at me. I stood there stripped of dignity, being laughed at by the head of this calculator club. And right there and then, I swore that I would get my revenge. I would get an HP 67. I would get an HP 97, which was the same as the 67, except it also had a printer and was bigger, and it was like a tabletop calculator. Or I would get the newly published, newly produced HP 41 which had an LCD display, an alphanumeric keyboard. It could show letters on the, on the screen. It was the wonder. But it was, oh my God, it was expensive. I had no way of coughing up that money. So I had to wait for another few years. And in 1983 or 84, I finally had the money set aside for an HP 41 CX, the top of the line HP 41. You know, a couple of thousand programming steps and uh, continuous memory and ability to put all kinds of uh, peripherals onto it. You could hook a printer onto it. You could hook a spectroscopy device uh, to it or any kind of lab equipment. It had a magnetic card reader you can plug in on the back and several modules. It had all kinds of programs pre-programmed into these modules as well as ability to save to, uh, to magnetic cards or uh, even cassette later small micro cassettes in the cassette player, etc., etc. All kinds of stuff. Fantastic little computer in the hand. But it wasn't until many, many years later, actually in 2003, because, because I had so much else to do in life, that my revenge sort of got back to me. And in 2003, I started collecting the calculators. I got my HP 67, uh, which was sort of, for me, the hallmark of a professor of astrophysics, because all the professor had an HP 67 or the 97, but the 67 was the thing. So I got that, and I got a host of other calculators. Actually, I got 90 of them. And this was shown on Norwegian television, because uh, somebody had called into the Norwegian television for a program that featured collectors, all kinds of stuff collecting. And they thought collecting calculators, that's weird enough. So we'll go to this guy and, and uh, have a, a talk to him and show his collection on TV. And that happened just two months before the whole collection burned up. Uh, the whole collection was at my office in the company I owned together with my then wife who accidentally had called the TV and got, uh, got me on the TV for, for this collection show. Um, and uh, the whole building burned down. 
It was one of the great fires of Oslo. And uh, it was an old building from 1905 that had, uh, you know, was completely uh, burned to the ground. And uh, the fire department or somebody at security or something called me in the middle of the night and said, it's, it's burning. Your whole office building is burning. We were the biggest tenants on uh, one of the floors there. And we were notified by securitas. And then we, I was like straight vertical and running into the car and driving down. And there were 67 fire, um, fire people there, uh, fire guards, uh, firemen. And, um, and uh, there was this guy with a golden helmet. He was in charge of everything. And the guy with a silver helmet, a lot of other people running around and trying to put out the fire. And uh, in the middle of this, I got this idea that I really need to get in there and get my calculators uh, and also some other stuff for a customer that we had up there. And I went over to this uh, guy with a, a golden helmet and I said, you know, I, I really need to get into that building. There is something that is, I really need to get it. And he was looking at me and saying, you know, it's burning. It's, it's dangerous stuff. I said, yeah, 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 but it, yeah, it's a matter of life or death, I said. Uh, because it was. It was my calculators, goddammit. And he went like, okay, okay, come with me. And he took me in the burning building without any equipment. I don't think this adheres to any safety standards. And then we went up to the third floor. And he uh, used his axe through the door. And out came a, a whole cloud of black smoke and he was standing there breathing like normal and I was almost choking and he went like okay get in there then so I got in and got the stuff that I needed to get for the customer and then I said okay I need to get in here too and that was my office where all the calculators are and I I said okay be quick because now it's starting to to burn underneath us and I could hear the 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 floor cracking and it was like oh we were almost folding through the floor at that time and um, I went into my office and there was a guy there uh, putting out the fires and he just screamed at us get the hell out of here it's poisonous gas and then I chickened out I was like a meter maybe two meters away from uh, the first ever produced, at least we knew about, the first ever uh, serial number of an HP 37. There was an HP 01 there, which is a, a calculator watch, which is worth a fortune. And my whole collection was actually standing there and it wasn't burned up. I could have gotten it, but I was so befuddled by this poisonous gas screaming that I, I chickened out and I ran away. And I was like, what the fuck? I should have gotten my, at least my HP 37. Well, luckily, uh, Julius, my beloved HP 41 CX, uh, actually, I lost my first HP 41 CX uh, on an airplane back in 1996, but I got a new one pretty, pretty uh, early after that. And that was Julius too. Now, he was at home. So I had one calculator, but that was all what was left of my 90 calculators. So 89 of the calculators burned to the ground. They were not able to salvage the building. A month or two later, I was actually asked by TV again to get on the show. And uh, the TV host, Peter Scheidven, his name was, he, he interviewed me in the ruins of this uh, old building and said, OK, so how do you feel about the calculators? You were standing on the ground and they're probably in pieces uh, beneath us. How do you feel, guide? And that time I actually had started up my calculator collection again. I had like three or four calculators that, uh, you know, I got. And uh, I said, you know what? It actually feels great. It feels really great. Because the point of collecting the calculators was not to have them. Because that would be sad if you had all the calculators in the world in pristine condition. Then what? No, the point of collecting the calculators is the hunt the feeling of the rush of finding a new one and a new one. It's actually the the journey is the destination. And the destination is a sad one because then the game is gone. You know, full control, no game. And he was like, yeah, that's an interesting viewpoint. And I said, you know, I have 
eight years of collection behind me. Now I will probably have eight years of collection in front of me. That's a freaking 16 years of fun. So then with that TV appearance, a lot of people saw that and many came to me, uh, wrote emails, who called me and said, you know, I have a couple of calculators, we'd like to have them. And I was given a host of new calculators. So my, my collection was kickstarted by that program. One guy gave me calculators worth, uh, in the matter of dollars, probably three, four, five thousand dollars of calculators because he had his basement full of pristine, never used HP 33C, HP 34C. And, you know, it, it was uh, Christmas for me when I got to his place. And he said, yeah, you can take them. You know, my wife is complaining that I have this, uh, this bunch of calculators in the, in the basement. So please take them out. I was like, I was giggling of fun. So now I have more than 100 calculators. Not all HP, though, but I probably have about 70 HP calculators, uh, which was more than I had before, because out of the 90, I probably have like 50 or 60 HP calculators. The rest were uh, TI and some interesting other ones. But now I have uh, 100 total or more. So now I feel fully revenged. And I do program them, especially the HP 41. And you can find a lot of my stuff on GitHub. If you go to my uh, my uh, homepage, isene.org, I-S-E-N-E.org, you will find my HP41 calculator page with lots of links to my GitHub pages. And you can take everything you want because everything is open source. You can just use it for whatever purpose you want. There is stuff there that you can do on an HP41. There is how to hook it up to a PC, how to update it. Uh, Lots of auxiliary programs, and there are also some programs for other um, uh, other calculator um, uh, yeah versions like HP twenty five, HP twenty nine, etc. So uh, knock yourself out with uh, with the interest if you have uh, for the HP forty one or any other yield packet calculator. So. That's it for now, just to, uh, to lighten you up and uh, see if yeah, I can uh, tingle your little interest in being a geek and uh, starting uh, uh, collecting, maybe contributing to the HP calculator community. It's not that big a community, it's, uh, but uh, the diehard geeks, we, we collect stuff and we share the programs and uh, yeah, it's, it's fun, it's real fun. So uh, apart from collecting interesting people, I do collect uh, HP calculators. And you can find stuff on my page, also videos, etc., interviews. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, next time I'm probably uh, going to talk more about uh, uh, probably something else, totally something else. It just dawns on me and then I do a podcast and uh, you never know what happens. So see you next time. <laughs>